What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you some basic techniques for dub style mixing in the box. I'm gonna show you how to set this up in your DAW, how to get hands on in the mix, and how to generate classic dub style effects. You're gonna have a lot of fun with this one, so let's go ahead and dig right in. Now you need either the multi-tracks or the stems. I'm working in Ableton, but the setup and the routing works pretty much the same in any DAW. I'm working with five stems, and I have them spread across channels one through five, and each channel volume is mapped to the corresponding channel on my controller. We've got drums, some percussion, bass, the chop and skank with the keys and guitars, and some horns. All right, first you wanna set up the inserts or auxiliary sends. This is how we're gonna send each channel to the effects. Let's start off by inserting three returns. And then I'm just gonna color them red, yellow, and green, just to match the corresponding knobs on my controller. And it's gonna keep things organized and my eyes on what I'm doing during the mix and not on the screen. All right, next you wanna send each return or auxiliary back to its own channel. So I'm gonna create three new audio tracks. We're gonna create a spring reverb, a delay, and a phased tape echo. Now back on each return, make sure you change the outputs to the input channels. So we'll send return A to the spring reverb channel, return B to the delay channel, and return C to the tape echo channel. This routing is also gonna allow you to record in real time and edit the effects channels later on if you want to. The last thing you wanna do is map the channel sends to your controller knobs. So on my controller, I have knob one assigned to send to effects return one, knob two to effects return two, and knob three to effects return three. I also mapped the last three faders on my controller to the volume controls on the three effects channels. All right, now we have control of the parameters we need for the dub. Everything's routed and mapped, so let's add some effects. On return one, we're gonna insert a spring reverb. We want that classic metallic bouncy reverb effect. I've got the spring reverb of the GTR stomps, straightforward, few controls, and you can dial in that familiar springy, splashy reverb effect real quick. Let's bring the mix all the way to 100%, the pre-delay all the way down to 20, and then on my controller, I'm just gonna dial up the spring reverb on the drums, that's insert one, and I'm just gonna play it back to adjust the time. Check it out. Right there at about 3.5 is where I get that nice echoey splash reverb. All right, next we're gonna prevent low end buildup with the HEQ after the spring reverb. I'm just gonna roll off to about 200 Hertz. And then after that, I have the one knob filter inserted where I can reduce top end harshness and also use it as a resonant filter effect. All right, let's move on to return two. We're gonna add a dub style delay the H delay and the Kramer Master Tape plugins, just a few that are perfect for dub effects. More on the Kramer Master Tape in just a minute. First, let's set up H delay. Let's take the dry wet to 100%. We're gonna set the feedback at zero just so we get a single repeat with the delay. Now let's set up the feedback loop. Again, make sure the feedback control is at zero. Then back on the delay channel, you wanna send the insert of it to itself. And now, whenever you dial in the return or aux two on any individual channel, you send it to the feedback loop. You can take care of the volume or mute the feedback loop like that. And it's also a good idea to lock in the max volume of your faders to zero dB just to avoid any jumps in volume while you're performing. All right, let's head back to H delay. Now you can always sync it to host or BPM, set it to a dotted eighth or 16th, but to make it a little more organic, try switching to manual and feeling out the delay to the music. All right, you also heard that variable pitch effect, and those are exactly the kind of imperfections you want when creating dub style effects. I'm gonna keep the delay time right here at 315 for now but you can also try experimenting with the depth and rate controls of the modulation. Check it out. Just gotta feel it out, play with the parameters like an instrument, 
and it's those imperfections or mistakes are what make a dub and this style truly come alive, all right? We're also going to activate lo-fi mode for that analog character, and then let's bring the high-pass filter to about 250 hertz to prevent any buildup in the low end. The low pass I'm going to assign to my controller. All you need to do is right-click on the parameter, choose Learn, move the knob on your controller, and you're done. I'm going to keep the low pass right here at about 3.5 kilohertz. All right, let's move on to effect send number three. I have the Kramer Master Tape plugin followed by a phaser. Kramer Master Tape is ideal for dub effects and generating all sorts of trippy tape delay and echo effects. I have the plugin on its default setting and I have the delay time and feedback assigned to my MIDI controller. Just like a tape machine, when you manipulate it in real time, you create all sorts of warped and spaced out effects. And then when you add the phaser to it, you add a nice liquid sort of panning stereo warmth to it. Check it out. Now you also want to experiment with sending the effects to each other. Try sending the tape echo to the spring reverb. send the spring reverb into the other delay. Now that you know how to set it up, you can add additional returns and effects. There's no limit to where you can take this. Just remember to think of the faders, mutes, the knobs, and all the parameters of the effects combined as an instrument. Give the music you're working with a few passes as you set up the effects. Get familiar with the rhythm. Create your own dub mixing template and practice the movements and record yourself. The dub influence still continues to impact all genres of music to this day, so these techniques can be applied to any style of music that you're working on. For more tips and tricks on dub style mixing in the box, visit waves.com slash dub tips to learn even more. Now make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for the latest tutorials and news from Waves Audio. And until next time, 